Okay, we have here today another integral from the UNSW CPMS integration B 2023 number four. We have the integral of the square root of one minus x squared dx. Okay, I think I'm actually just gonna do the most straightforward thing on this and do a trig substitution. So in this form, what I wanna do is, I wanna make my substitution and set x equal to sine of t. Now we can use the inverse on this and just solve for t and find that t is gonna be just arc sine of x. I'll take my derivative using this first line, so our dx value, taking derivative of sine t, we just get cos t dt. So then I'll go ahead, we'll make our substitution. So now we're gonna have square root of one minus, this is gonna become sine squared t, and our dx is gonna be all this stuff, which is cosine t dt. But we have the identity for one minus sine squared t. We can write this as cosine squared of t. But we're inside the square root. So taking the square root of cosine squared t, I think I will actually leave, because technically we need absolute value on this. We'll have absolute value cosine of t times cosine of t dt. Now with the absolute value, we could break this into two cases. What we wanna do is look a little bit at the domain of this. Looking at our original problem, we can see that our x value needs to be less than or equal to one in order to keep what's inside the radical as a positive number. And then also has to be greater than or equal to negative one. And these bounds for x are actually fine because the whole range of sine is gonna be actually just minus one to one. But then this is also the domain for arc sine of x. And this gives us back our range for t. So we can see from this that our t is gonna be between minus pi over two and pi over two. But then just thinking of this in terms of the unit circle, minus pi over two, if this is minus pi over two here, and here's our positive pi over two, well, in this region here between minus pi over two and pi over two, this is just quadrants one and four. But in quadrants one and four, cosine is always positive, so this is gonna allow me to just remove my absolute value here. Oh. So now we can just multiply together our cosines and we end up with cosine squared t dt, but I can use the power reduction on this and write it as one half plus one half cosine of two t dt. We'll go ahead and integrate. We end up with one half t plus one half integral of cosine t is sine two t, but we need to consider the two and put it in the denominator as one half. But then I can just rewrite this, one half times one half, I can write this as one over four. Sine of the two t, I can use the double angle formula on this and I can write this as two sine t cosine t. If I thought ahead, I wouldn't have done this because the two would have canceled with one half, but this is actually gonna be one half right here. And so now we're done with our integration, we're just gonna need to back substitute in order to finish this off. Okay, now we already have a value for t right here, and we have a value for sine t, which is just x, so that's easy. All we really need is our value for cosine t, and for that, what I'll do, I can just draw my triangle, and we'll just use our sine t value, so our angle will be t. I can write my x as x over one. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse, so we can write this as x and one for the hypotenuse. Using Pythagorean theorem, we find our third side, which is gonna be just one minus x squared. And so we want a value for cosine of t. Cosine is gonna be adjacent over hypotenuse, so it's just gonna be this square root of one minus x squared. But now that we have this, we've got everything we need to finish this off and back substitute. So for our first piece, our t value is gonna be, we're gonna have one half arc sine of x plus one half Sine t is just x, cosine t we just found, and so I'll just add a plus c on there, and that's it. So there you have it, straightforward trick sub. We'll stop it there. Thanks everyone for watching. Have a good day.